but welcome to our mindfulness moment series. It's really good to see you all. Thank you for tuning in. So this is our July program. It's the third and our last of this mindfulness series. So again, welcome and welcome back everyone. My name is Natalie. I'm a curatorial assistant for Access and Learning. And I'm joined here by Carmeet Ifra. So I'll turn the floor over to Carmeet in a minute to introduce herself, but she'll be leading us through an hour long mindfulness exercise um, through various techniques of looking at art and mindfulness practice. So maybe we'll just move on to the next slide now. Here's just uh, an image of the facade of the AGO. The doors are open. We've got some really wonderful art and new exhibitions on view. Um, we'll move over to the next slide. Now we'll begin with a land acknowledgement. The land the AGO is on is Mishi Saga Anishinaabe territory, Mississauga. It is also governed by a treaty between the Mississauga of the Credit and the Canadian government. Toronto is Mishi Saga Anishinaabe territory. It has also been occupied by other Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat Confederacies. So now I'll just uh, turn it over to Carmeet. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slow Looking Mindfully. I'm Carmeet Ifra, a dancer, yoga and Pilates instructor, and a mindfulness ambassador. Growing up as a child, I found dance and movement a way to enter a world of possibilities and an outlet to escape from everyday stressors. Emotions that I was withholding found an expression through movement that at time kept me lucid. Have you ever felt any form of art, a book, and an art piece offered something of healing or nurturing? How did it manifest in your own body? With this in mind, I'm grateful to be able to connect with you today to explore and share ideas together about our Canadian artists. There is nothing to get right or wrong, just enjoy the process of your own discoveries. Without too much effort, immerse yourself in it and let it take you wherever it takes you. We will start with introduction to mindfulness, followed by a gentle movement and body scan to prepare ourselves physically and emotionally to enjoy the process of slow looking. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness originated from the ancient Eastern and Buddhist philosophy. It is the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose and non-judgmentally to the unfolding of experience moment to moment. Mindfulness is about observing our thoughts, feelings, and body sensations we are already experiencing and acting on them with discernment, kindness, and compassion. The objective of slow looking mindfully is to view the experience with being impartial, open, non judgmental, curious, patient, and unafraid. It's what links mindfulness with art. The desire to express oneself creatively relates to a need to feel seen, heard, and understood. All of these things together can build up resilience, support, and emotional well being, and help people feel more in control, even during times of chaos and uncertainty. I'm gonna continue in a, with a gentle movement. So find a comfortable seated or standing or lying down position, whatever works for you. You feel free to turn your camera off, turn your audio off. And I would like you, I'm inviting you to sit on the edge of whatever you're sitting on. If it's a chair, if it's a cushion, just to find a nice comfortable seat. Your pelvis is grounded on that um, chair or sofa. Let's take a deep inhale through the nose and out the mouth. One more time like that. Inhale through the nose and out the mouth. 
Awesome. Let's start by rolling the shoulders back three times, allowing the spine to get nice and tall. And let's roll them forward three times, finding really the movement for, from the shoulder girdles here. Awesome. Keep your hands on your thighs, grow even taller, and drop the head heavy towards the chest. Just the head is dropped heavy. And let's move the head, rotate one ear to one shoulder and the opposite side. The head moves like a pendulum, moving from one side to another. One more time. Awesome, let's keep the right ear to the right shoulder. Shoulder is heavy. Add the right arm on top of the head to add some weight on the head without pressing and allow the opposite left arm to dangle by your side, feeling heavy. And continue to breathe and release both shoulders down as you do that. Now gently, I'm going to circle to the opposite direction, add the left hand on top of the head for gravity and the opposite arm just dangling down heavy and breathing, enjoying that sensation of breath and coming back into center. Let's reach the arms all the way up, interlace the fingers as the palms reach up. We get a little taller. As you exhale, round the spine, tuck the pelvis and reach the arms forward across the chest. And you can even tuck the chin. And as the next inhale, we grow tall through the spine, the arm reaching up. And exhale, we round, really massaging our vertebrae here in the rib cage, at the back of the ribs. One more time like that. Inhale, reach tall. And exhale, round. And coming back into a nice tall seat, lower the left hand on the edge of the chair or the sofa. Take a side stretch to the right. The right arm across the ear, lengthening all the way from the pelvis to the fingers, to the tip of the fingers. And we're going to move to the other side, whatever side that may be. Reaching, lengthening the arm. And come back to center. I'm going to take a twist. So we're going to take our right hand to the right leg and the left hand behind you on that chair or sofa lengthening the spine and twist behind you as the pelvis stays heavy and grounded. The spine is lengthening, the pelvis is heavy. Come through center, we're gonna to switch to the opposite direction. Left hand on leg and right hand behind you. Get a little taller, anchor your pelvis and twist. And gently come back into center. Now you can't see my legs and I can't see yours, but let's stretch them. Take a nice stretch, maybe even rotate through the ankles inside your shoe or sock, both directions. And then reaching the arms up and keep the legs nice and straight as you lower the hands down to the legs. So the legs are active, the head is heavy. We're gonna take three breaths. One, two, And one more. Awesome. Coming back into sitting tall. And we're coming into a body scan. So now that we are nice and relaxed, I would like you to find a seat somewhere, a quiet place, so you'll not get distracted. Starting with our body scan. <clears throat> you can take a anything lying down, sitting, whatever feels good. Sitting or lying down in a comfortable position. Allow both soles of your feet to connect to the floor. Closing your eyes or softening the gaze downwards beyond the ridge of your nose. 
noticing the sensation of your breath in your body. Where can you find the breath? In the chest, and the belly, and the rib cage, and the spine, without judgment. Noticing the cool air through the nostrils on the in-breath, and the warm air out the nostrils on the out-breath. Relax your shoulders. Bring your awareness to the support of gravity as your body held by the earth and the contact of the pelvis and the back of the legs with the surface. Allow the legs and pelvis to relax. Bring your attention to the feet, their contact with the floor, Noticing the sensation of the sole of your feet, the toes, and the top of the feet in contact with the shoes or socks you are wearing. Let the feet relax. Now bring your attention to the length of your spine, up to the crown of your head, breathing into the space between each vertebrae. Let your spine relax. On the next inhale, bring your awareness to the length of your arms, their weight on the surface they are resting on. Notice any sensation on the palms and fingers. Let the palms, arms, and fingers relax. Now shift your attention to your face, noticing sensation on the forehead, the cheeks, and jaw, around the eyes, around the nose, around the mouth, and the throat. Let the facial muscles and throat relax. Now bring your attention to the mental space where the mind can travel and thoughts are arising and passing away like clouds in the sky. Let your mind rest in your body like the body rests on the chair, on the cushion or the floor. Let the mind open and rest. Let your thoughts come and go. Be restful, relaxed, alert, and attentive. Notice any bits of discomfort or uncertainty, but not letting them take you over. Finally, coming back into the sensation of breathing, when you are ready, open your eyes. We will be examining one piece of art at a time. You will have about three minutes to immerse yourself in silence with the background music. I invite you to have a pen, a paper handy, or a journal or a sketchbook in case you find the urge to draw or write. Then we will have discussion and observation on each of the art pieces. In order to benefit from this experience, I would love to hear your voices. Participation is highly recommended and much appreciated. Just a quick reminder of the tips using Zoom. If you would like to talk or raise your hand, simply click the participant reaction of raising hand. There is a bar. If you'd like to mute your microphone, unless you would like to participate in a conversation, please click the, click the mute button on the left side of the screen. 
Comments and questions, you can share them with the group by clicking on the chat icon or typing your remark. And verbal participation is very much encouraged. Use earphones in order to re reduce echo and mitigate background noises. We highly recommend to use those earphones. We can start our first slide. Image credit, Peggy Nicole McLeod at the beach, 1934-1937, watercolor, opaque watercolors, traces of colored wax and black crayon on paper. Bringing your awareness to your physical and emotional sensations. What did you feel at first glance? What did you notice? Colors, shapes. I felt a lightness in the mood right away, like the soft, soft colors. Um, it was pretty obvious they were outdoors, like water and sand. Um, I recognized the outfits. It felt obviously not modern and it felt of a period in the past, but it kind of looks modern. Like if you weren't digging in too much, like looking at the outfits and the styles and the fact that, you know, they're all ladies surrounding each other, like, I don't know, these might be little clues or might not, but it could look modern. Um, but if you look deep in the details, it feels, you know, of a past time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Olga was mentioning on the chat, notice the blue bathing suit, then orange felt timeless, less is more. 
Yes, I've the first thing I've noticed is blue. Blue is my my favorite color. I noticed those shorts right away. Thank you, Olga. Anyone else would like to share how they make them feel? At the first time, they're just first glance of looking at it. It's Olga. Um, I also noticed the blank faces. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's what gave me the sense of the timelessness. Um, but it was as if it could be any one of us or all of us <laughs> there. That's true. Thank you for sharing. Um, in the chat, um, Debbie mentioned faces barely visible. Ashley made me feel a sense of joy at the warmth of the sun. Sean, I felt the movement of the skirt, the waves, the hair, the simplicity of their clothing and color and form, very freeing. Yes, absolutely. I felt uh, the same way. I love the beach, so it made me feel warm and cozy and breeze of, of air. Softness. Notice blue, then orange, freedom, bonding. Thank you, Charmaine. Maybe reminiscent about my youth. Thank you, Olga. Leslie, a sense of calmness. Yes, for me personally, the beach is always a calm place. Thank you so much. Do you like this work more or less the longer you spend with it? What did you discover and how it makes you feel? And are you judging your experience, your feelings, your reactions toward this art piece? Perhaps it's my age, but it makes me feel rather nostalgic, or maybe it's because of the bathing suits of um, time in the past. But for me, the emotion I feel is nostalgia. Nice. Thank you. I like it more uh, as I look at it. Um, there's a, a sense of togetherness, even though the women are not engaging with each other, they're very calm and together. It just is a beautiful feeling. Absolutely. Thank you. Is there anything in particular you discovered after looking a little longer? I'm a little confused by the women on the right who seem to me to be dressed up. Mm -hmm. That's what I was, uh, yes. It seems like she was wearing a full blown dress there. Yes, strapless yes. evening dress. That's true. And heels also. I can't see the heels. Yeah, it could be, it could be. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna yes go ahead sorry I, I'm I'm struck by the um anonymity and the the separateness of everyone it seems very disparate to me at times you know the colors and um motion and composition feel very comfortable but when I look at it more I find it, it's very um I find it a little troubling, actually, that there's no connection. That's interesting. I would see it in dif differently from my perspective. Um, there is connection through the calmness. That's how I see it. Um, sometimes connection doesn't have to be, uh, from my perspective, doesn't have to be um, verbalized can just be in stillness. They're just there enjoying the moment together. But again, it's everyone's perspective is different and that's what we wanna hear. 
Thank you very much for sharing that. I'll share mine then too, because it's also a little bit different. I found there, at first glance, I got the beach and the calmness, but then when I looked a little bit longer, I, their body positions felt a little bit like posturing to me, just the way they were standing. It felt mm -hmm. a, bit, a bit like assuming a pose. And I felt that like that made me feel kind of frustrated. Like there's this pressure to be feminine and look a certain way and stand a certain way. And that was the feeling I was taking away from it. Uh -huh. It feels like they're hanging out. They're just being free with their postures and just kind of, you know, hang out. Um, being who they are, not trying to, to be different. They just, however they feel, that's how they, it portrays, I guess, in their posture that they're standing. Um, let's read some of the chat. Wayne, um, some details are clear, some not. And with the overall softness, it seems like a memory rather than a real scene. And thank you for that ob observation. Olga, don't we have to be judgmental if we're going to express feelings? That's interesting. What do you mean by that, Olga? You can set it in the chat or you can verbalize it however you'd like. Hi, it's Olga. Um, I guess when, I, when I'm asked to express, you know, how did you feel, mm -hmm. I'm judging how I felt. Why you're judging it. Feelings is our feelings. You don't have to judge it. It doesn't have to be right or wrong. It doesn't okay, have to be I a guess, certain way. Okay, so I'm I'm not using the word judgment. I'm not. I wasn't understanding the word judgmental mm -hmm. in that way. Um, I wasn't thinking wrong or right. I was thinking if you judge something, um, besides, you know, like wrong or right, you judge how you feel. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling bad. <laughs> but you I'm shouldn't judge. Light. You just let it be. Just let your feeling be without judging. Okay. That's what we're trying to accomplish in mindfulness. Uh, Valerie, brown skinned female presenting person in orange bathing suit in center of image makes me feel seen and included. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you. Leslie, I find that the artist caught the in instance of the moment in a gestural way. Yes, I, I, I feel the same. Thank you. The easy breezy way of being at the beach. Absolutely. Kristen, confident women at peace with their bodies, poised and at ease at the same time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Shauna, this is such a quick sketch that it makes the moment seem all the more fleeting. It's simply one moment in time captured very quickly. Thank you. Let's move to the other um, um, inquiry. Do any memories or situation come to mind? Where would you imagine yourself right now in a familiar place, a new place, a new adventure? Even closing the eyes for a second um, after we've um, had some moments, um, long moments with this art piece. So maybe closing the eyes and trying to bring memories or situations to mind or an adventure or future of anywhere you'd like to be that you've never been. Ashley, immediately I imagine myself in the south of France. Beautiful. I wouldn't know how it could be because I haven't been there, but I can imagine it's beautiful. In a weird way, I mean, I've been to the beach and multiple beaches all over the world, but when you ask, does this feel familiar? In a weird way, it doesn't. And I'm not sure if, um, is it because it's all women? And I feel like maybe I've never had a situation where there is absolutely all women at a beach. Maybe it's just something that's not familiar to me. 
but I thought that was interesting because I I love beaches. I've been to so many, but I look at this and I'm like, I can't even picture how this would be familiar to me. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. Thank you for sharing. It's like the past and the present. Can you hear me? Or... Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so girls... I just actually did have a girls get together, not at the beach, but at a pool. And it, it, the other day, it just reminds me of that. But then I see that I think in the back there on, it looks like they're rowing a boat. Mm -hmm, like a kayak yeah. or something. Kayak yeah. or something. So that reminds me of my childhood when I went to the country and we did go boating and mm -hmm. hey, although it wasn't all women and we were all families together in the country. So it's like the past and present overlapping. And you do see some faces. Yes, they're very faint. It's kind mm -hmm. of interesting. It's a, a really neat style because I know people do have, like I, my son and my mother have that style. They're artists. So it's funny. <laughs> like, yeah. like the faint uh, faces that you have to really look hard to see them. They kind of melt into the background, into the whole. So right. I find interesting yeah right maybe the artist just wanted us to immerse in yeah. the time and the situation yeah. and not really get into details of yes facial expressions yeah that's exactly what i what i thought you're just sort of immersing into it melting into the scene mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you okay Kristen mentioned in the chat sense of being at a spa waiting to leave the women's waiting area women in various state of undress minding our own business and being a collective group at the same time that is the memory I pulled up <laughs> thank you okay so let's move on to the next um, um, inquiry here if our vision was not clear, how could we relate to the painting? Does it make us feel anxious, frustrated, or we allow our other senses to take over? And how it will look like? What would you hear, feel, smell? Do we feel it anywhere in our bodies? <clears throat> So imagining that this picture, that this art is, is even less clear than it is, it's kind of like fading in the background and you, it's hard to see even the details that we see here. How do you think you would be able to relate? What comes to mind? If you know it's we are where we are, we're at the beach, we're hanging out and what would be coming to mind and how can you you think you'll be able to relate when you can see um, maybe even as much details as we can see now, which is not a lot, but very little details. I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but mm -hmm. I can smell suntan lotion as opposed to sunscreen, because in the 30s, there is no sunscreen. It's suntan lotion. You want to tan. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I can hear the, the lapping of the water on the shore, a gent a very gentle lapping. Yes, it's exactly what I'm trying to get to for you to try to open up the other senses. Um, and, and to see what how you can find in your imagination without being having a clear vision. Yes, thank you for that. Anyone else? It's funny, I, I thought of suntan lotion too, and the um, smell of the sea and, and that beach smell I am, I'm not sure what it is but um, the sand the, 
the air and uh, it doesn't it's not a hot day it doesn't feel like a hot day to me it uh, just a really pleasant um, soft summer day where everything is comfortable and uh, um, yeah just quiet, quietly hanging out with other women some I know some I don't know <laughs> just thank you I'm just going to um, quickly read the other couple um, comments from the chat and we'll move on. Um, Shauna, I hear the murmuring of voices, but nothing is clear. Stephanie can feel the sand and texture of some pebbles near the water. Leslie, maybe hear seagulls flying over. Seagulls, sorry, <laughs> flying over the splash of water. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing um a little bit about the artist uh peggy nicole mcleod was a canadian painter whose modernist self-portraits figure studies painting of children still lifes and landscapes are characterized by fluidity of form and vibrant watercolors she painted in watercolor virtually every day over time, and according to her inclination, the composition became increasingly complex. The watching women whom she sketched from her apartment windows, the housewives who kept a keen eye on their children below or on the seasonal activity of their neighborhood, became decorative and sometimes symbolic forms when she developed them in more finished compositions. The painting also demonstrated McLeod's skill in capturing with color and movement, the hurried activity and liveliness of city street, just like in her watercolors. She was able to convey in purely visual terms, the emotional impact and excitement of group activity. Her approach as is as in evident in the work was no doubt guided by her belief that once a line was put down, it possessed an expressive reality in itself and should never be changed. Peggy Nicole McLeod is now widely recognized as one of Canada's most important artists of the 1930s and 1940s. Although Toronto was McLeod's home for only a short time span, the artist nevertheless managed to leave her mark on the city's art community, serving as art editor of the Canadian and assisting in the establishment of the Picture Loan Society. In 1937, she moved to New York, but returned every summer to Fredericton, New Brunswick, where she established the, established the Observatory Art Center at the University of New Brunswick in 1944. Her 10 years in New York City, in particular her life around East 88th Street, produced an impressive body of work. McLeod died of cancer in New York in early 1949. Thank you. Let's move to the next um, art piece, which actually from the same art artist.
um, Peggy Nicole McLeod again. It's a city street, 1934 to 1937. Watercolors, opaque watercolors and traces of color wax on paper. Hmm. Tune into your body sensation. What did you notice at first glance? Did you feel resistance or acceptance? How did it manifest in your body? Are you judging your experience? Am I supposed to feel a certain way? Am I right? Am I wrong? I felt a, a sense of excitement, like this city hustle and bustle uh, uh, made me want to be there. <laughs> but uh, no discomfort, no. I kind of felt the opposite. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, because the colors aren't really offensive. They're still soft. Um, I do like the city generally. I live in the city. This seems a bit theatrical. Like, I don't know, it seems like, I don't know if they're dancing or putting on this makeup, but it seems almost like I don't want to be here. And I don't know why. <laughs> I hear you. I feel I felt the same. I felt very overwhelmed. I felt like I need to take a couple of breaths just to calm myself down to kind of learn to uh, to just observe. Um, it felt tight until I kind of got used to used to it, used to that um, spend longer with it. Yes, it's quite different from the previous scene, which was very calm. And this is such a hustle and bustle. And also, it, it seems to me they're mostly men in this scene as compared to the previous, which was female, which is interesting, the juxtaposition of the female being calm and the masculine here being very busy. Mm -hmm. And this is that a freakish female that I see on top of the hat, behind the hat? I can't quite make out what it is. Yeah. For me, it feels like a female. For me, I've seen, I mean, I can see after I've spent long time on this, um, a few couples actually um, hanging out there in the, in the city. One is hugging, one is one beside each other. Um, the one beside, beside the horse, is that one beside the horse? I think so, to the right. So there's kind of a couple that's mm -hmm. kind of almost hugging. Yeah, except... What are they in? I don't know. I see it. I mean, one is, is a gentleman to the right, and the other one, I think, seems like wearing a skirt. That's my observation. Oh, okay. I didn't see them as being together. I thought the man was kind of in front, mm -hmm. looking, look, walking one way, and the woman was walking the other way, and he's holding a rolled-up newspaper, and... <laughs> If, if it had been contemporary, I would have said that he was checking on his phone. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I found it's similar to the previous scene. There was the woman on the bottom right in the previous scene was looking down as if she were looking at a phone. And here it is a man who was looking down as if he were looking at a phone. It's interesting similarity. Also, uh, the people are, to me, I do not see any people interacting. They're all separate as hmm. was in the previous scene. Okay, yeah. interesting. They're interacting in silence. <laughs> um, let's read a few comments in the chat. Um, Janet, the first felt a sense of confusion. Leslie, I wanna be there with them. The horse, the streetcar, the lights on the building on the right. Shauna, I felt drawn in. We can enter and explore. Interesting. Um, William, I immediately tuned in my own thoughts about navigating Toronto for better or worse. Yes, we need to take a breath. The work appears frantic and jumbled together. It looks like the narr narrator is, is visually recalling a scene, a memory. Charmaine. 
I was remembering when I used to work and waiting for the streetcar during rush hours, and I'm happy I'm not doing that anymore. Thank you, Kristen. Toronto TTC, rush, noise, displeasing until I focus in on my, um, on the embracing couple, which reminded me of connection as opposed to the disconnection of urban like. And the last one on the chat, Valerie, yes, reminds me of a busy Toronto street with crowds of people on sidewalks on right and police officer on horse trying to keep order in the street. Thank you very much. Um, does this piece of work, this piece of art, sorry, uh, reminds you of any experience, emotion or time in your life? Although a few of us did um, mention that. Fiona mentioned in the chat, this is a lively city, busy, clearly winter. I see coats. I wish to be there. Ashley, it reminds me of watching the musical. Meet me in St. Louis. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of Mardi Gras. I don't know why. I think it's that woman's face that I keep mm. being drawn to with like the crazy hair and the eyes. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know, for some reason, I feel like it reminds me of Mardi Gras, even though it's probably not in that city. It's kind of what it reminds me of. Yeah, absolutely. It reminded me in Times Square, although I was not in the 1930s or 40s, obviously, but. <laughs> It just reminds me of Times Square when you stand on in one of the corners and you look at all the stores and, and the lights and the and the, the smoke. I see like in the in the sky, you can see the, the smoke from the pollution going through. So you can't really see the sky, but you see the smoke in the buildings. If you had a chance to place yourself in this busy city, where would you place yourself? What would you be doing? What drew you to that specific area? I would only be there if I had to be there, for example, <laughs> if I were going, going to work or coming from work. Otherwise, I wouldn't choose to be in that scene. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Maybe attending a festival like TIFF or, you know, with all the hustle and bustle that we've missed in the past few years. It's, it's very exciting. I, I love going downtown. It looks exactly like Toronto, even though it's obviously a long time ago because of the horse. And, you know. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, even people, I remember people on corners, like, like that weird woman and man, they would dress up in cost like young then that square and weird costumes. So that reminds me of that. Mm -hmm. like, but, mm -hmm. I feel drawn, drawn in. There's a space in the middle there uh, uh, under the green light. The green light also makes me feel drawn in and kind of going towards that uh, center there. Yeah, I, for some reason, I don't, I don't like um, city hustle and bustle these days, but probably because this is the past, it's, it probably brings back uh, good memories for me where, where I enjoyed those kinds of scenes and being in those types of places and crowds. And, where I don't, whereas I don't anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Open yourself up to senses. What sounds can you hear? What scents can you smell? Does it remind you of a place in your community? We mentioned Toronto. I hear music. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely hear music, like, I don't know, jazz or something, or some sort of instrument. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Anyone else would like to contribute? I'm glad I'm an observer of this rather than in it. I don't <laughs> like crowds and I am enjoying watching rather than being part of. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I smell pollution, gas from cars or trains. Maybe back then a lot of cigarette smoke or pipes or or anything like that i smell maybe some um the pollution of the streets themselves the garbage maybe because it's so crowded and it's so it seems like a a, a busy small corner like a busy small street Let's uh, read some of the chat. Um, Eileen, this painting encompasses a lot. I see an external, internal divide here. Thank you. If you'd like to elaborate on, on that uh, verbally, that would be great. Um, Charmaine, I can hear the clang of the streetcar and I smell cigarette smoke and food. Yeah, like street food. Olga, I hear the streetcar is bell ringing. Leslie, the ding ding of the streetcar conversations, people's shoes on the cement. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for your contributions. What do you wonder about this work? Given the chance, what questions would you ask the artist who made this? I have one kind of question. It was almost something I was drawn to right away. Um, I'm wondering if that white space in the front of the painting is intentional to try and like draw your eye to more of the color in the background, mm -hmm. because I feel the opposite is happening for me. And I don't know if it's because it's too busy where all the color is and there's so many overlapping shapes and it's like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. And so I keep focusing on the couples in the front and I'm almost like blurring out everything in the back so I'm kind of wondering if was it intentional to leave it white to draw your attention to the color in the back or the opposite that's an interesting question um, I thought the blanks were kind of uh to let us feel fill in the blanks ourselves and ask ourselves what's missing. Um, I don't know, somebody mentioned a dreamlike um, aspect to this and, uh, and I think, I, I, I feel like somehow that applies with, with the blanks, you know, it's, it draws in the, individual percep uh, per uh, perception yeah yeah and uh, and and i mean we a lot of people have had different <laughs> obviously like some very positive and some very negative so that kind of makes sense to me it's like mm -hmm. you you it's very much it's a very participatory like you, the the viewer can participate in this painting by just applying a lot in the blank spaces, kind of. Um, anyway, I'm babbling here. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you for, thank you. I just find those two, the, the man and the woman, the very front, those faces are kind of disturbing, like the one with the weird hair. It almost reminds me of a Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. Or and the man looks like scarecrow. Like, <laughs> look, he's wearing something over his head, although he's not. But I, it's the first thing I noticed when I looked at it. It's like, is this intentional? I find I wouldn't like that hanging over my bedroom. I might have nightmares. 
<laughs> just those two. The other are are you know okay. They dream like and interesting, but those two, right? <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I find those disturbing. I don't know if that was intentional or not. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to read the last um, few comments in the chat. Um, Olga, I feel the green light is urging me to hurry. <laughs> the simplicity and blank spaces on the left call me in direct contrast to, contrast to the other side. I agree. I feel the same. I wonder if the blank sign looks like a Massey Hall sign. That's from Shauna. Sorry. And the blank police officer tells us the heart of the city is found in the individuals, in the color they bring to the city, not the companies or authority figures. Even the streetcars moves people around and it's colorful. Thank you. Um, and Olga, to me, it's the yin and yang of the city. Thank you. Very interesting. So I, I really appreciate all this contribution. I'm going to close with, um, with um, a little bit of a paragraph. Um, going through this experience, how did we feel at the start of it? And how do we feel now? Did we surprise ourselves? Did we discover anything new about ourselves? How would you think your experience would have been different if you were viewing the art in person? What would you prefer and why? As we come to a close, we hope is that by participating in the slow looking and mindfulness workshop, you can continue to give yourself permission to go inward more often, allowing yourself space and permission to respond and connect to your experiences in an authentic ways. Knowing that our body's movement and sensation can be found everywhere and in everything. And we can give them the space and time to speak to us. Connecting to art offers us a way to learn more about ourselves, to support us as we move through this world. There are unlimited ways to explore attention and allow ourselves to feel. Thank you very much again for participating. This is our last um, number three of our last sessions workshop. And I hope you friends have a wonderful weekend. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was very enjoyable. It was beautiful. <laughs> very interesting. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you.